Action. This is an interview with Satajit Ray, recorded in Vermont on August 31st, 1958. Mr. Ray, I'm very glad to have the opportunity to discuss Indian films, and in particular, your own films, with you this evening. I would like to start, for the sake of our listeners, by asking you just briefly to give us a short history of your work in films. Actually, I was not a filmmaker before. I was a commercial artist but I have always been very seriously interested in movies. And, I, and in 1947, I think, I read a very fine book, which I thought would make a good film. And uh, I, so I wrote a script. And it was in 50, I think, that I started looking for a sponsor. I had my script, and I couldn't find a sponsor. So in 52, I think it took one year to find out that nobody would back me. Financially? And, yes, financially, yes. And in 52, I and a few friends of mine managed to pool our resources and started shooting this film with our own money. This is the film Partha Panchali that yes, you're discussing is, now? Yes, yes. And that was, in other words, your first film, and yes. you've since made others? I have made the sequel to it, Operagito, and I have made a comedy after that. What was the name of the comedy? The comedy was called, in English, The Philosopher's Stone. And these were all made in India? Yes, they were all made in India. In Bengal, in Calcutta, in my hometown. And when you began making the preparations for your film, did you have an idea that you would devote the rest of your life to directing films? Yes, I had, I had some such hopes, you know. I, it all depended on how the first film would be received. And do you now think that that is what you will do? Yes, oh yes. I'm absolutely definite about it. Do you have any plans now for other films? Yes, I'm completing the trilogy. Actually, Pothir Panchali was the first part of a trilogy I had in mind. And I've just started the third part. And what was the reason that you made a, uh, another, a third film, a comedy, not part of the trilogy in between? Actually, the second one was not very well received in India and it lost some money. And, well, I did it as a change, you know. And then the second one got the Venice Award. And I felt that, well, I, perhaps I could go on with the trilogy after all. Uh, Partha Panchali, of course, got the award recently at the uh, Stratford Film Festival. Oh, yes, it has won Canada. quite a few awards, yes. And it won, the, the first award that it won was at Cannes. What year was that? That was 1956, I think. For direction? Yes, no, no, it got a special Grand Prix as the best human document. Uh, when you say that uh, the third film that you made was quite a change, and you did it as a change... I, well, I'll interrupt for a second. I did it as a change, and I did it because I had to make some kind of a film. My unit was sitting idle, and we could have, couldn't afford to wait any longer. And I had this comedy, I, I thought I would just experiment with a comedy. How was it received? It was received very well in the big cities, of course, but in the suburbs, they like the more formula-bound films, you see. And this when you say formula-bound, you mean the formula, the formula for Indian films? Yes. What is the formula for Indian films? Well, uh, they like uh, mythological and devotional subjects and even social themes they do like occasionally, but they have to be uh, spiced with songs and dances, you know. Generally, I mean, that as a rule, but there are exceptions, of course then your films are not made according to the Indian formula? No, absolutely not. They, they are departures. Would you say that they are more Western in style? No, I don't think so. I think I've managed to evolve uh, an absolutely Bengali. I wouldn't say Indian because India is a vast country and a very varied sort of country. I think I've, I've been able to uh, evolve a Bengali style of a realistic sort of filmmaking. Do you suppose you could put in words some of the things that are involved in this uh, Bengali style that you are working on? Well, actually, a style is a combination of many factors, of, of the movement of the people, of the quality of the landscape, of the textures, the visual textures, of the manner in which uh, words are used, language is spoken, and the rhythm of life itself, I think the rhythm of the film, must to a certain extent reflect the rhythm of the life of the people of, that are involved in the story. I like simple themes, 
simple emotional situations and I think simple things are more universal than complex ones. When you uh, begin working on a script, do you always look for a story which already exists in a written form or will you in your future work try to write scenarios based on ideas of your own? I, I should like to do it very much indeed with the three films that I have so far made and the fourth one that I'm making have all been based on existing stories. I always do a lot of adjusting, but Walter Marcelli, for instance, the incidents in the film are all in the book, but not in the order in which they appear in the film, you see. I made changes in arrangements, you know, of the sequences. Uh, the music that was used in Path of Charlie seemed to go along very well with the images in all oh, yes. instances. Yes. Did you plan the music ahead of time while I, you were shooting? No, well, actually the music was recorded and uh, composed. I wouldn't say composed, it was played all in a continuous session of 14 hours. One day, actually. After the film was finished? Not quite finished, but uh, the composer was available at a particular time and I had to use him then, you see. I had discussions with him before he started doing the music and I told him that I needed certain kinds of music and he was able to give me what I needed. It was played, recorded, uh, in a single sitting. Which you mean the, the composer played the instruments? He played the instruments and he had other instrumentalists as well, but much of the music was played by himself on an instrument which we call the sitar which is, is a string, string? blocked string instrument, yes. And there are actually two predominating in instruments used in this film. One is a sitar, the other is a flute, bass flute. That and was and some drums we used, percussion instruments we used also. The composer was uh, uh, Shankar? That is the brother of the dancer. Ravi oh, Shankar is the name of the composer. I see. And uh, he has written music for films before? No, that is the first film that he made. I see. Actually, we had to do a lot of juggling in the editing room, you know, to sort of get the music in sync. But if you had 14 hours of music and the film... 14 the hours of composing, playing, recording. That took 14 hours in oh, all I see. of it, you I know. See. <laughs> I you Not meant. 14 hours of music. It was the session which lasted 14 hours. The music was about, I think, an hour and a half altogether. The transitions from incident to incident in the film, which in, in some cases are... Uh, rather fast. Mm. They were cut like this by you originally. Yes. I like rough edges once in a while, you know. Yes. I, I like a rough quality to my films. Does that in any way uh, contradict the normal method of filmmaking in India? A rough edge, yes. as it were? Yes, it does, because the films produced in Bombay and Madras, for instance, are quite slick in the Hollywood manner. Excellent processing and excellent cutting and this and that. How did the Indian public uh, like Pater They liked Machale? it very much indeed. They liked Pater Machali very much. And did they, do you think that perhaps there is a, a development away from the traditional uh, film in India as spurred perhaps by your work? I think some new directors in Bengal at least are working on similar lines. They have been given encouragement to make different kinds of film, rather on the lines of Patek Machali, you know, shooting outdoors and using non-professionals and that kind of thing. Because it's cheaper to make films that way, for one thing. Is there anything in the history of world cinema that has influenced you particularly? Well, uh, I was completely overwhelmed by, my, by Bicycle Thieves when I first saw it in London. The Seeker? Yes, absolutely. I had seen Open City before that. But uh, it was Bicycle Thieves which really sort of opened my eyes, opened windows for me. This was before you made any films? Yes. I had Pater Pachali in mind even before that, uh, but I saw Bicycle Thieves in 1950. I wouldn't say that I was influenced by Bicycle Thieves because there were films that, uh, before that which I had liked and admired immensely, almost as much as Bicycle Thieves. Films of Flaherty, for one thing, and films, some of the films of John Ford mm -hmm. and some Renoir, like The Southerner, Mm -hmm. and uh, some Dovzhenko. I think that they had contributions towards the, the ultimate evolution of my style, whatever it may be, I mean, but uh, one is not necessarily influenced by films alone, you know. One is Certainly. influenced by literature, by music, by, 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 
by just looking at things, looking absorbing impressions and all manner of things. But it, it would seem to me that it took considerable courage in 1950 to envisage making a film which presents a complete departure yes. from accepted methods of filmmaking and to want to do it in India. Well, there was no question of my working away from Bengal because I had always felt that uh, one is best, uh, most creative in one's own soil, you know. I, I know Bengal better than any other place in the world. I can't emphasize, emphasize making films in Europe, for instance, in Italy. I know of Italian and French directors who have worked in India, but uh, I, I do admire their courage, but I, I shall never be able to undertake a, making a film abroad, or even outside Bengal, for instance, in a place like Bombay, which speaks a different language and which is a different look. Is there anything in Partha Panchali that is, I don't want to say autobiographical, but that reflects any personal part of yourself more strongly? I was, I'm essentially a city man, but I was very sympathetic to the theme, to, the, to everything in the book. And it's in the second film and the third film, which sort of uh, takes place in the city more, I felt, I feel a greater kinship with the central character because I, I understand him more and more as the film sort of progresses. And I think the third film uh, is very much after my own heart, you know, because uh, he's supposed to be an educated young man who was rid of all his prejudices, he's irrational, he's almost an intellectual, you might say, and I understand him best in the third part. And Perhaps uh, some of my own, uh, my feelings will go into the character. I'd like to ask you some more technical questions about oh, yes. Arthur Panchali, if I may. Uh, first of all, uh, did you shoot all the uh, things in a village? Yes. Not very far from Calcutta, actually. You can drive ten miles out of the city and come to a village with no electricity, you know. It's a quite an sort of authentic village with nothing of the city about it. How long did you shoot? The film. How long did it take you to shoot all the exterior? Well, you see, the number of shooting days I think was uh, 72 or 3 in all. But it was spread over a period of three years because we had no money for long stretches in between. And we were just waiting for the next installment of money from somewhere or other. All the people who worked with you on the film were... Uh... Well, the crew, they were all friends of mine, you see. And have they worked in other films? Well, the art director had some professional experience and the editor had, had some professional experience. How about the cameraman? But the cameraman was absolutely new. He, he was a young musician. He was a good friend of mine. He played the sitar. And he, I think he had done some still photography. Not, not as an amateur, you know. Just he, he had to happened to have a camera, that's all. But he was an ambitious young boy and he wanted to make a movie, if possible. I mean, he had watched Claude Renoir at work on the river. Oh. But of course that was color and the problems yes. there were quite different. I mean, lighting, etc., absolutely different. Did you have a lot to do with the design of every frame? Or was it more or less... The no, I don't like two sort of well-composed frames, you know. They're, after all, generally you have panning shots and things, so composition in filmmaking is not quite the same as composition in painting, for instance. Mm -hmm. I think a too well-designed sort of frame which it makes you contemplate it for its own sake. It is wrong. I mean, it's it, it, then it's it's not serving its function properly. I think. Were you satisfied with the uh, work that was done on your yes. film? Yes. Uh, well, very large part of it. I was. I found it very satisfactory. Of course, I have, you know, I have my own satisfactions with certain aspects of it. But we did our best. We were not always uh, able to do what we wanted. And I think I think the cameraman did a very good job indeed. Oh yes. Mm. Well, I certainly think that you did your best, I may say so. And I'd like to thank you for being with us this evening and discussing your film work with you. I'd like to wish you good luck in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much.